Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. I'm a medical, surgical, cosmetic dermatologist. I just finished clinic and I just love seeing patients but also keeping up with the channel. Today's video is very important. We're gonna be talking about skin cancer warning signs, red flags to keep an eye out for because that's a very common question. I feel like a lot of patients come in very anxious because there's a spot that they're worried about. A lot of times I am happy to reassure patients, hey, this is just a benign seborrheic keratosis or some patients call them barnacles age spots or it could just be a little wart freckle that has a normal pigment pattern i use my dermatoscope very often with almost every visit be sure to see a dermatologist who uses a dermatoscope okay this is like our stethoscope we need this in our exam to look up close see the pigment pattern or lack of pigment pattern we are trained in residency to go to know different patterns when we look up close with this light this light doesn't give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down to say whether to biopsy or not we actually have to study the lesion see the way the blood vessels are behaving, the thickness, the branching of the blood vessels, the way the pigment is arranged, whether it's clumped, if it's reticular. And that goes the same for moles on the palms and soles that can look different. People with skin of color can get skin cancer, specifically melanoma, even on the hands and feet more readily than fair skin individuals. So this video is for everyone. I see skin cancer in all skin tones. It's not just a fair skin Caucasian problem. It's also seen in all populations. I've seen it even if me from Hawaii my Polynesian patients all the time and they make pigmented basal cell carcinomas where it's not just that pink pearly papule that fair skin individuals might get. Even in Japan, I gave grand rounds in Tokyo and Osaka, the doctors there would say, hey, we have never seen a basal cell that's just red like you see in America. Ours are always mixed in with brown. Brown is a predominant sign of your basal cell carcinoma. So pigmented basal cells, very common in Asia, Polynesia. I see this in my African-American patients, my Latino, Latina patients as well. Yes, Seattle, we still see a lot of skin cancer. You think it's always gray and cloudy, but my patients will go off to Maui, Arizona, Florida to vacation and get a lot of sun. And a lot of the sun damage we get from the first 18 to 20 years is what influences us to get all of the sun damage and skin cancers down the road. It doesn't happen from our vacation in Mexico last week. It's a lot of this damage has been done from decades ago. They weren't using sunscreen back in the day. And people online say, oh, sunscreen is the cause of the increase increased rise of skin cancers. No, we're monitoring better. People are seeing their dermatologists more regularly. And all my patients who've had skin cancer, they all say, I wish I used sunscreen before. And a lot of the damage from decades ago, from them sitting out with baby oil, tanning outside or indoors, is starting to come back and haunt all of us. Whether you're in your 30s, or up. It's not just an older person disease. We're seeing skin cancer in people who are 30 years old. There's definitely a genetic component. There is a strong UV correlation. So sunburns, blistering sunburns, indoor tanning, just one session in the tanning booth can increase your risk of skin cancer between 20 to 60%, including melanoma risk going up significantly with one session of indoor tanning. Now, what are the warning signs? Let's talk about melanoma. It's one of the deadliest skin cancers up there with Merkel cell carcinoma, which is more rare. It's but just as aggressive as melanoma. Melanoma is typically a brown or dark brown or black spot. We'll talk about an amelanotic melanoma because recently Khloe Kardashian commented on my Instagram and said, thank you for spreading awareness on amelanotic melanoma. So we'll get to that, okay? Because amelanotic melanoma is terrifying, but you do see that in young and older patients. Now, let's go to classic melanoma, dark brown spot. Usually asymmetric, the borders are really jagged, and there's more than two colors. Those are all warning signs. Let me go through the ABCDEs real quick with you. So we got the ABCDEs, A, asymmetry. So you want your mold to be symmetric in all quadrants. If you bisect it in two dimensions, you want it to be symmetric on either side of the line. B, borders. You want them to be nice and smooth, not jagged, not smudged, and not faded. You want a nice defined border. If it's jagged, we worry about that. C, color. You want it to be less than two colors or one color as much as possible. If it's more than two, I worry about it. Melanoma can be dark brown, brown, black, red, you have some white in it and a mixture of all of those, not good. D, diameter. You want it to be generally the size of an eraser or smaller. If it's larger than the size of an eraser or 0.6 centimeters, then we worry more about that. But I feel like this rule doesn't always apply, especially if it's a mole you were born with. Those congenital moles can be on the larger side and that's okay. Larger birthmarks that are very large, like 20 centimeters or more, definitely see your dermatologist and monitor those regularly because those have a four to 6% risk of developing into melanoma. 
melanoma down the road. Something I want to stress is that melanoma can just show up as a new mole and be a melanoma, or it can convert from a benign spot that you were born with or something you picked up in childhood, it can become a melanoma. So even if you said, hey, that mole I've had forever is okay, those moles can turn into melanoma. E, this is the most important sign, evolving, evolution. So any change in your mole is important. And if it's changing month by month, that's too fast for any lesion to change. If you're noticing change in color, size, shape, definitely it's your dermatologist. We typically do a biopsy, whether a shave biopsy or a punch biopsy, where we use a tool that looks like a little pen and we just kind of cookie cutter out your mole to check it. If it's bleeding, if it's not healing, it's scabbing. Also big warning signs to keep an eye out for. If you have a child that has a mole that's becoming red, painful, if it's bleeding, those are more, those are warning signs for pediatric melanomas. They don't always follow the A, B, C, D, E rules like adults. Definitely the evolution, the E is true for pediatric melanomas, but always looking for red, painful, bleeding lesions on your child. You definitely want to see your dermatologist ASAP. Now, other more common skin cancers, basal cell, squamous so let's talk about amelanotic melanoma. A melanotic melanoma is totally possible. You're thinking like, how is a melanoma, which is dark, brown, black, how can it have no pigment? A melanin, right? No melanin in it. That is possible and still be a melanoma. So I found red melanomas in males and females, whether it's the area where the sun doesn't shine or a sun exposed area on the shoulder where it's just a big red patch. Khloe Kardashian had that on her cheek and it was just a pink speck. It turned out to be melanoma. So thankfully they caught that early and she's doing well but i did a video just saying that melanoma doesn't always have to be brown and she thanked me in a comment on instagram saying thank you for sharing i had to learn the hard way it is unfortunate when you see kim kardashian saying that i have a tanning bed in my home and then she later on said oh it's for my psoriasis you'd rather do medical phototherapy than a tanning booth with a ton of different dangerous uv rays and phototherapy in a medical setting uses one wavelength that's therapeutic for your psoriasis and you're not getting a blast of uva that can cause skin cancer so a melanotic melanoma, very scary, can be tough for us to diagnose clinically. So we do biopsy thinking it's going to be a basal cell carcinoma because it's very irregular and it's a red spot. And basal cells in Caucasians usually are just red flat spots or a red bump. It doesn't always have to be bleeding. So that brings me to basal cell carcinomas. That's the most common skin cancer one can get. It is thankfully the least aggressive. I'd say it's basal cell, squamous cell, melanoma. Basal cell carcinomas though can affect 20 year olds, 30 year olds, uh, definitely from, you know, longstanding uh, sun exposure, but also can be genetics too. You can have a genetic mutation that can predispose you to melanoma. There's also genetic mutations that can put you at risk for either basal cell carcinomas or even melanoma, but there's also a genetic mutation specifically that can cause Gorlin syndrome where you see kids with basal cell carcinomas. I've seen this, a child, little girl covered with basal cells and it's heartbreaking for the parents to hear this that their child will deal with skin cancers throughout their lives and age 8, 9, 10 you're just covered with them so it, it is sad and not always from you know, just purely the sun so there is a genetic component as well when it comes to basal cell carcinomas that usually presents at like we said before a pink bump pink flat spot. If it sits there long enough, it'll cause a crater or a scab, it'll bleed, it'll be very friable and it'll easily bleed when you wash your face. I see a lot on the nose, the cheeks, it could be the lower eyelid, you can find that quite readily. And of course, any sun exposed area in the body. Squamous cell necks, very common as well. I diagnose that every day like basal cell carcinoma, but it has different looks to it. It can look like a wart, it can look like a huge dome volcano, it can look like a flat area with just rough scale. It can be quite tender, it can be quite painful when you touch that skin scaly patch. There is a precursor lesion to it called an actinic keratosis that we spray with liquid nitrogen. So squamous cell carcinoma can be a little tricky to diagnose at times. It is easily treatable if you catch it early, but if you have a compromised immune system, say you're an organ transplant patient, you can have a really hard time with squamous cell carcinoma where it can metastasize to your lymph nodes like melanoma would, and also maybe even lose a limb or even become fatal if it is advanced. It might require chemotherapy or immunotherapy to treat a squamous cell carcinoma and sometimes radiation. That's a tough one. Big things would be looking out for your ABCDEs, looking out for anything that's changing month by month, especially letting us know if you have a spot that you thought was a pimple didn't go away within a month. Definitely see your dermatologist because 
pimples should go away within a month. And Jimmy Buffett passed away from Merkel cell carcinoma. And Merkel cell carcinoma is very fatal. And it could just be a little boil you saw on your arm. And you're like, oh, I thought it was a pimple, but it's still there after a month. Definitely see your dermatologist because Merkel cell carcinoma metastasizes very quickly like melanoma. And that would require some pretty hardcore systemic medications at times, like immunotherapy agents, as well as surgery or radiation. I know this video is not as fun. We're not talking about sunscreen and hyaluronic acid serums, but it's a very important video to do, especially with Chloe Kardashian coming out with talking about her skin cancer. I applaud her for spreading awareness on that. We don't talk about skin cancer enough and skin cancer in skin of color is very important to talk about because I know my friends in Hawaii, you know, some had deeper skin tones, you know, whether they're Asian or Polynesian, they said, I don't need sunscreen. Sunscreen is important for everyone, not just from a photo aging perspective of blocking UVA from aging our skin, but also protecting it from radiation. There is a genetic component when it comes to Asians and African Americans or Latino, Latina patients where it might not be related to sun. And that's why we can find melanoma between the toes or on the bottom of the toe or of the toenail in my skin of color patients. And that's how Bob Marley passed away at a very young age. He had melanoma of the toe. And you might say like, yeah, that's definitely not from the sun. I would agree with you. It's not always sun related. There is a genetic component. So I always tell my patients skin of color, you should still get your moles checked out, especially if they're changing on the bottom or on the side of your foot and the inner part of your soul, looking at that area, making sure there's no moles that are going through the ABCDEs between the toes I found melanoma I found it on the buttocks where the sun doesn't shine no one's immune to skin cancer that's my biggest message today people want to say oh Bell Marley was part white so it doesn't matter that you're talking about melanoma when it comes to him his type of melanoma acral lentiginous melanoma and subungual periungual melanoma is primarily seen in African Americans and Asians so it is very relevant that he is skin of color no one's safe from it it's not an older person disease or cancer we see it in younger patients as well hope you guys like the video please subscribe to the channel we'll go back to talking about skincare very soon drop some comments if you have had experience with skin cancer and if you anything else you want to share about your journey because i appreciate you all for helping me spread awareness because i make these posts on tiktok or instagram and i love all the people who share their stories because they are really making a difference and spreading awareness on skin cancer so wear your sunscreen guys let's talk about sunscreen some more later on take care peace